Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know if I wanted to make a video about these two games because you guys know me. Oh, you know me so well. I like being positive and oh, just appreciating the best parts about video games and video gaming culture. <laughs> but every now and then, I get really excited for a game being released on Switch. I hype it up. I talk about it a bunch on my channel. And then the game comes out and it turns out my not exactly be as exciting as I thought it was going to be and maybe possibly you probably shouldn't buy it on the switch I hate making videos like these I really 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 do a lot of people have been asking me why haven't I talked about outer worlds and spongebob and I gotta be honest I've tried I actually filmed a review a full review of outer worlds and I hated both of them because I was just not happy with how it looks and performs on Switch. I can't tell if I'm just being way too critical or if it's really as bad as I think it is. <laughs> and then with SpongeBob, and I haven't even tried to review that one. I have played it a bunch on Twitch and even on YouTube Live when we hit the 1 million. Thanks again, by the way. And I think everyone that watched was pretty much on the same page with how the game was performing and how it looked and everyone, you know, could tell how I felt about it. But rather than try and review these games like I've been doing, I'm just gonna sit down with you guys and we're gonna experience them together. I love this beat. Great choice on the song, man. Yeah, best song ever. Oh, come on, I want a turn. Is it my turn yet? No. no. Oh, but you two have been listening to the Raycons for like an hour now. Oh, look, Raycon only sent us the one pair of earbuds. There's three of us and that's six ear holes. So right now, we're sharing one each and you're just gonna have to wait your turn. Yeah. Plus, they're super affordable compared to other premium wireless earbuds on the market. So if you really wanted to listen, you should just buy your own pair. Yeah. Hey, watch this. You could even use my code in the description of this video and get 15% off your order. You know, it would it would really uh, help me out. Oh. <laughs> Man, screw you guys. Mm -mm -mm. These sound so good in my ears. Well, yeah, it's the Everyday E25s, their newest and best model yet. With six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, and a compact design that gives you a nice, noise isolating fit. Hey, watch this, my turn now. They also come in a fun range of new colors, so if you really <laughs> wanted to buy your own- I'm not buying nothing. In fact, you know what? You guys aren't even real. <gasps> you know, I didn't know I could actually do that. What were they listening to? Oh, Nickelback. Okay, all jokes aside, I seriously do love these things. So get yourself your own pair by clicking the link in my description and getting 15% off your order. Now, if you don't mind me, I got some Ray J to listen to. Starting with Outer Worlds. Right off, I wanna say, this is in no way a slight to Virtuous. The people that ported this game to Switch, they've been showing the Switch a ton of love, porting games like the Bioshock Collection and the XCOM Collection, even the Dark Souls Remastered game, and they all look and play incredible on the Switch. But Outer Worlds is a current gen game, a gorgeous one, mind you, and it's also a huge, expansive, open world game in the style of old school Fallout games. While when Fallout games were still good before Fallout 76. The game itself, developed by Obsidian, is a beautiful, fantastic game. And you can get the full-ish experience of that game here on Switch. The gameplay is fully here. The story is fully here. The game itself is fully here. But I would argue that a large part of the Outer Worlds is exploring the worlds, is exploring these planets and beholding the gorgeous environments and you're just not getting that on Switch. I have done some of my own comparisons for this game and I'll throw them up on the screen for you to see right now while I'm talking. You can clearly see which one looks good <laughs> and how much you're missing in the Switch version. I was trying really hard to forget about that and enjoy my experience, but then I hit this town, which is like the second town into the game, and visually, it just started freaking out on me. The buildings just loaded in for a second and then loaded out, and they just became these solid black messes of structures. I really don't understand what was happening there. It does seem like textures just refuse to load in in general. As you can see while looking around here, if you've played Unreal Engine games, you'll know that once you load into a game, there's like a couple of moments where the assets haven't loaded in yet, but 
the game's running, and then it all kind of flicks over and clears up. This entire game just looks like it never flicks over and clears up. Everything is muddied and kind of a mess. To make matters worse, there is really long load times. We just sat through a really long one while I was talking. There's a lot of frame rate issues. Anytime I'm trying to fight more than a few NPCs, the frame rates just tank for me. Anything further than a couple of feet ahead of you is just going to look blurry and messy. Whenever a game like this gets ported to Switch, I feel like there's definitely a trade-off where you get the game, you get the full experience, and you get it portably, but you lose that visual quality. And it's always up to you as the player to decide whether or not losing that much visual quality is worth playing it portable. It just doesn't work here. I'm sorry, but this just looks awful. And I feel terrible about saying that. I don't want to play this. I just can't play this. It is a really fun game. As I said, I tried to review it because I played it on Xbox and I've played it a little bit on Switch. If you liked games like Fallout New Vegas or, I mean, heck, if you even like the newer Fallout games, you kind of know what you're in for here. It's very similarly structured, but in my opinion, it has a lot more personality. The NPCs actually have dialogue trees that you can fully flesh out. The combat is really smooth, fun, and engaging. The exploration is really fun on other systems because of how gorgeous it is, but it is just a really fun world to explore. Honestly, I can't recommend buying this game enough, just not buying it on Switch. And I love the Switch. This is also in no way a slight to the Switch. I think some people would be quick to jump to how underpowered the switches, especially now that we're going into the next gen of systems, but no one is really asking the Switch to be a powerhouse. And I'm not a graphics guy. I'm really not. I don't care about graphics if the game is fun. And if this was the only way to play the game, there was no other way to play the game, there was no other cheaper, more affordable way to play the game, I might add in there, then I would play this and I'd probably have a ton of fun. That being said, I could sit here all friggin' day and pick little things apart, little S assets, how blurry certain areas are, what's missing, what's not here. I just don't want to be a mini Bobini. I really don't want to be that guy. It didn't turn out well. It's still a really fun game. And if you can look past this, there's still about 30 hours of an awesome game to be found here. Outer Worlds, it's by far, I almost want to say it's still the most impressive port on the Switch. I know Doom is a current gen game and Doom Eternal is coming, but those games are very linear. They load in one area at a time. You black through that area, load into the next one, probably with a loading screen in between. They're kind of these smaller set pieces for the levels. They don't have to render out and build these huge open environments where you can go anywhere you want and there's no loads. That's so much harder. So we have impressive ports on Switch. Outer Worlds is still honestly probably the most impressive one. That's just saying something considering how unimpressive it looks. I don't know how this video is gonna go down. You guys like it when I'm honest, right? Like you don't want me to sugarcoat things, right? <laughs> now that I've done that, <laughs> Let's look at Spongebob. Now this game. I don't know what happened with this game. This game really doesn't have an excuse. I don't think I can say it's an impressive port or an ambitious port or any of those adjectives, words, verbs, nouns. I don't know what happened here. And I feel like this is the one that people are gonna think I'm being harsh on. But if you haven't seen it, for starters, what just happened there when this game loaded in? So badly optimized, I can't even. There's so many things I can pick apart here. Why is SpongeBob so fluorescent yellow? Is it just me or is it kind of really hard to make out the details on SpongeBob's face? Maybe it's because he's so low resolution in this Switch port. The worst offender in this game is just the resolution. It's so bad. Look at every asset in the game and how jagged the edges are. I don't understand it. It's not a taxing game. I don't know what happened. There isn't much going on. Like, I can probably count the amount of assets in front of me on my toes and fingers. There's almost nothing happening up in the sky, nothing happening in the background. The game isn't very detailed. Honestly, it does look better on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Like, it's cleaner and crisper and the colors pop a little bit more. It's not a really fully fleshed out remaster. I don't feel like they really poured their heart and soul into it. When you look at something like the Spyro remaster, not only is it very clear when you look at side-by-side -side comparisons that they poured their heart and soul into that remaster and it looks so visually 
gorgeous, everything pops, there's so much detail in it, down to the tiniest little detail. But then you look at the comparisons between this SpongeBob game and the original Battle for Bikini Bottom, I just don't feel like they have poured their heart and soul. I don't know why they made everything look so neon. When you look at the original game, I know the color scheme is a lot more muted because it was back on Xbox and GameCube and everything else. Maybe this is just me. Character models aside, especially Plankton, I almost prefer the way that game looks and kind of wish they had just remastered that. My personal opinion and taste on how the game turned out looking, and there are things about it that look good. I mean, I love the way their houses look. It's just the environments are very flat to me, very lifeless. It's what happened with the port that made it look and run so bad. I have hit such bad frame rates, even in areas like this. Look at that little bubble guy. I can barely even make him out. Like, my, it's... What the heck? When I get really close to him, his character model smooths over quite a bit. But you even go just a little bit away from him. What's going on there? And again, I, I draw that correlation to Spyro. That game, I feel, was a lot more visually intensive and fast paced with a lot more moving assets. And it's so clean and crisp and beautiful on Switch. That port is flawless. I actually have never looked at a comparison between Spyro Remastered Switch versus PS4. Other than a tiny bit of clarity and colors popping, the edges are clean. It's a perfect port. You're really not missing out on anything. And then you go back to this. What happened to this? <laughs> it's just a, another very ugly port. That being said, resolution issues aside, it's a nicer port than Outer Worlds because it's a lot more visually demanding. And the game is here. I mean, frame rate issues aside, it's in certain places, but not the entire game. It's definitely playable. The controls are still wonky. They didn't really do much to make those... Uh, that much better. But as a whole, the original game that we all love is still here and it's still a ton of fun. It kind of feels like a lazy cash in, maybe a little bit rushed. They saw an opportunity to make some money on nostalgia and they went for it. But I don't think it turned out that bad that I can say don't buy it on Switch or don't buy it at all. It's definitely cleaner, more crisp and beautiful in other places like PlayStation. So if you don't care about portability, I would pick it up elsewhere. But if you're really looking to play it on the go, it's fine. It's really fine. I might be making a mountain out of a molehill on this one. It's really fine. I was just a little disappointed because I expected the same level of quality we got from games like Crash Bandicoot and like Spyro. It's just not here for this one. So that's that game. Again, I don't know. I wanted to review these games. I wanted to talk about them and everyone's been asking me to. I didn't really have too much nice to say about them. I, I really can't pull myself to play through them on Switch. All right, whatever. That's how I feel about those two games. I recommend buying them elsewhere personally, but if you really want to play them on Switch. They'll get the job done in a pinch if you're out of things to play. I hope you liked this video. I hope it helped you out. I'm sorry if it upset you. I really don't like talking badly about games, but I'm trying to be open and honest. So there, I was open and honest. How'd you feel about it? All right, bye. I'll see you in the next one. I really love you all. Like the video. Bye, 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 bye.